projekat Caves je i prošle godine okupio šest astronauta, ovaj put iz Kine, Japana, Sjedinjenih američkih država, Španije i Rusije. Oni su proveli šest noći u pećinama Sardinije u Italiji, istraživali podzemni svet i pripremali se za život u svemiru. Pećine i svemir imaju puno toga zajedničkog, pre svega mračno i neuobičajeno vanzemaljsko okruženje. Kretanje po pećini ili penjanje u zidove verno dočarava istraživačima kako bi izgledala jedna šetnja svemirom. Tokom ovog projekta astronauti saznaju i kako izgleda rad u multikulturalnim timovima, savladavaju tehniki liderstva i donošenja važnih odluka u kritičnim situacijama sa ciljem da unaprede sebe i svoje veštine. Istraživači i astronauti svake godine zadiru sve dublje u zemlju kako bi obavili i neke veoma interesantne naučne eksperimente. Šta su otkrili u podnožju Sardinije, gde su kampovali, kako su spavali, šta su jeli i kakve utiske nose sa ovog istraživanja otkrili su nam u videodnevnicima. Hello, it's the end of day one, our first full day within the caving system here and ending up at our campsite, Camp Okesa, the main campground for the ISA Caves training program. We had a very exciting day today. We entered Sagruta Cave System yesterday and set up camp, just a minimalist bit of whack type campsite at the Witch's Hat. And then we started on our first full day this morning. It was an interesting hike along the Via Ferrata, which is a steel cable that runs, runs along the while of the canyon. Pretty exciting journey for our first day in the cave, and it was, it was pretty arduous. We had a great time looking down the walls of the canyon and seeing the breathtaking views and all the speleothems around. But of course, we also had to do a little bit of science. As the biologist for the group, I was very excited about that. We stopped along in some small pools of water looking for different cave species. It's incredible the diversity of species here in the caves, very well adapted to the caving environment, of course. For example, some of them are completely blind, they have no body pigment, so they're a pale white or almost translucent, and no eyes since they don't have any light to see, so they've adapted in other ways. The experiment we were conducting yesterday was to compare two types of isopods, one aquatic and one terrestrial, and to do a little bit of a swimming experiment to see what would happen. So we collected some of the bugs along in this little vial, not really bugs of course, they're isopods put them in this petri dish and took some video observations of them swimming and then walking in the terrestrial habitat so we could see some how well adapted they were for both environments and get more information on whether or not they're truly two different species. We even have these cool collection devices and of course our trusty field notebook. While some of us were busy doing science, the others headed back to the camp so they could really get things set up. You can see behind me now some of the tents in this amazing landscape we have here. We have a whole big kitchen area and tables set up down there for all of our meals together. And back that way we have the outhouse for other forces of nature. We've had a fantastic videographer, Sergei is manning the camera now, and hopefully we'll have lots of great imagery from the mission as well. We're really excited for tomorrow. It'll be a big day where we'll be setting out to explore, a first full day of exploration where we might want to find a new advanced campground for future studies. It's been great talking to you today. I think Aki's going to pick up with day two tomorrow, so stay tuned. Check out the Isa Caves Twitter and blog as well. Hi, I'm Aki Hoshide from the CAVES uh, 2016 team together with other astronauts, cosmonauts, and taikonauts. Today was day two of the exploration. Uh, we went through the fourth wind branch and uh, went through uh, squeezes, very difficult to go through, and muddy and slippery rocks and also uh, went on ropes going up and down and went down through a 30 meter shaft. Uh, at the end we reached Baikal Lake and after that we were looking for an advanced campsite. Um, uh, beyond that is a uh, unexplored territory and uh, we needed to search for an advanced campsite because we wanted to do some survey and science beyond that area. 
Uh, we did some science on the way to Baikal Lake. Uh, we finally found a good spot for an advanced campsite. And uh, the condition for a good uh, campsite is, one, you want to have a, a good place to sleep. So you have to have like a flat surface, maybe soft would be good with sand. And also uh, have a water source close to you. In our case, Baikal Lake uh, provided some water, so that was good. Uh, finally, we had to make sure that we can communicate with someone uh, in the outer world so that if something happens, we can call for help. Uh, we tested the Tidra, um, however, we had some slight problems. Uh, finally, we got it working, so we have a good advanced campsite now. Uh, tomorrow, day three of the exploration, we will head out and uh, go back to the advanced campsite, uh, do some more surveys in science, and then spend the night there. So uh, look forward to day three and see you tomorrow. Hello, my name is Jessica Meir and I'm a NASA astronaut taking a part in the European Space Agency's CAVES 2016 mission this year. Yesterday was day five, the last full day of our mission, and it was absolutely stunning. We went to the lake branch for the very first time. We were dressed in our wetsuits yesterday for that, plunging into very chilly, crystal blue, clear waters, and it was absolutely amazing. The scenery was quite a bit different. The rock formations, the speleothems, quite a diff bit different from what we'd seen in the other branches, and it was absolutely spectacular. I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. I felt like I was walking through a cartoon or through the illustrations of a science fiction writer. It was absolutely amazing and really just difficult to believe that this was actually part of Earth. It just looked like landscape that none of us had ever seen before. Completely alien. We say several times this alien underworld and I really mean it. It just doesn't look like it's the same planet. We made it all the way to the Monviso where we conducted some science. We found two different species of isopods, one of which could possibly be a new species, so we're pretty excited about that. We did a photogrammetry study where we mapped a 3D area at the Monviso section. We did some CO2 measurements and some microbiology samples as well. And then we made it the rest of the way, all the way to our final point, the furthest point of the lake branch that we visited thus far, called Jericho Wall. We did some survey there and found out that the wall, previously thought to only be about 50 or 60 meters, was actually almost 100 meters. It was absolutely impressive. It was bigger than the biggest cathedral I've ever been in, just stretched out in front of you like this. It was really a sight to behold. Thanks for following our adventure. It's been absolutely an amazing one for us.